Welcome back to YouTube. I have again from in-depth tech reviews and here's Google Apps updates roundup number 39. It's been a long time since my last episode and that's why I'm going to share with you 37 new features and the changes that you should be excited about. Before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be the first to know about my next episode. You can also find my donation link in the description below if you're willing to support the channel. And now let's take a look at the new features. Let's start with YouTube. And now when you play a video and start seeking forward or backward, you will see a shaded graph highlighting the most watched parts of the video. So by this you can immediately identify the key moments and in my opinion it works the best in long videos so if you don't have time to watch the whole thing you can immediately jump to the most interesting parts. By the way this is a new experimental feature and it's only available for premium users so let me show you how to activate it. First you need to go to youtube.com forward slash new and to make sure you are signed in with your YouTube Premium account, on the left you will see a feature called Find Interesting Moments in a Video While Seeking. Make sure to tap on Try It Out, which is the same button like this one, but now because I activated the feature already, I have turned off. Once you do this, give it some time and it will show up in your YouTube app. The second change is the redesigned homepage for YouTube channels. First, everything on the screen is now centered instead of being left aligned. You can also tell the number of uploaded videos immediately from here, in addition to a small part of the channel description. Tapping on the description will take you right away to the About page, and instead of navigating to it yourself using the carousel at the top. Next, YouTube app on Google TV now supports the chapters feature. The list of chapters will appear once you start seeking forward or backward, and you can use the cursor to scroll through them and to choose the one you want. Next, YouTube app on iOS now supports most of the features I showed you in my previous episode, like the ability to play videos on your home feed, mute or unmute the sound, activate the captions, and also seek forward or backward. And when you open the video and then tap the ellipses, you will see the new option here called listening controls, which will give you these touch-friendly media controls. Change number five is the ability to control the YouTube app on the third gen Chromecast and the Chromecast Ultra from your phone or using your TV remote. Once you start casting from the YouTube app to any of the previously mentioned devices, you will see a screen similar to this one. It says here three ways to watch. Either to use your phone to pick a video, use your TV remote to control the YouTube app, or finally tap the cast icon to get the remote control on your phone. So let me put it into action. Here I have the YouTube app on my phone already connected to my Chromecast Ultra and when I tap on the cast icon, I'm getting this overlay menu with an option called remote. Tapping on it will give you this navigation interface. The interface is pretty straightforward. You have four navigation keys to move down, move up, move left and right, and the one in the middle will start playing the video you want. You can also tap the back button to go back to the home screen and to finally use the voice search to search for anything on the app. And if your TV supports the CEC feature, you can use its remote to control the YouTube app on your Chromecast. I tried the same feature with a couple of smart TVs from LG and Samsung, and I was able to control their own native YouTube apps exactly the same way I showed you now. So if you don't have Chromecast, you can also give it a try with the YouTube app on your TV. And finally, YouTube Premium members can get three months of Microsoft's PC Game Pass for free. If you have the YouTube Premium subscription, and you are based in the US, you might get an email from Google similar to this one giving you the offer and it says here it ends on the 31st of December and you can redeem the offer using this button. So it's better to check your emails in case you missed it. Now let's talk about YouTube Music. And the first change is the ability to add whatever songs you have in the queue to one of your existing playlists or to a brand new one. All you need to do is to expand the up next section and you will see a new save button at the top right corner. Tapping on it will show you all the playlists you have so you can add the songs to one of them or create a brand new one. And this is one of the most requested features in YouTube Music. The second change is the addition of a new widget called Recently Played and it supports Material U. The widget will give you very basic media controls, the play and pause button, the thumbs up, and the currently playing song. Under this, you will see a grid of five that shows your most recently played songs and the playlists. And when you tap on any of them, the app will start playing immediately and also everything is organized in a chronological order based on your recent activity. The widget has four different sizes. The smallest one is very basic and it doesn't give you any extra functionality. The second one is the one I showed you already. And when you make it bigger, you will get another line for your recent activity. Finally, when you make it the biggest size, nothing will be changed except that now playing part will be a little bit bigger with a bigger thumbnail. 
I'm a big fan of the design of this widget and how easy you can play songs, but the only problem is it doesn't have the next or previous track buttons. Change number three. When you tap on your account, you will see a new item here called 2021 Recap. The first section is an automatically created playlist that includes all your favorite and most played songs. When you hit the play button and then tap on up next, you will see all of them right here. And you can also take advantage of the new save button and add them to a permanent playlist if you want. The second section is called share your 2021 recap and here it will give you some insights about your artists, songs and the playlists you listen to and how many minutes per each. You can also tap the download button and in this case it will take a screenshot from your recap and save it to your gallery under pictures. You can also share your recap by tapping on the share button and in this case it will copy the same image and add some text to it. it says here check out my 2021 recap on youtube music with a link for others to check their own and finally you will see the list of individual songs you listened to the most from here you can share them directly with others or add to your playlists next google chrome and here i'm gonna talk about the stable version and the chrome canary Starting with Chrome Canary, the first change I'm going to show you is the ability to name your tab groups. So here I have a group already created and as you see the name field is editable and I can type whatever I want in the field. You will also notice this new behavior once I tap on the text field, the tab group window itself will shrink to give more space for the keyboard. Plus there is a new ellipsis button at the top right corner, tapping on it will give you two options, one is called edit group name which is the same thing as tapping the text field, the second one is called remove tabs from group and in this case you can select one or multiple to remove from your group. Now I created a new group to show you one more feature, if you take a look at the top left corner you will see a small glyph icon for each website inside the group and it can show a maximum number of four. One last change to show you in Canary when you open any website. If you take a look here at the top left corner and instead of having the lock button like the stable version as you see here i have the lock button tapping on it will show me this card but now in canary this lock button it looks like a drop down arrow so that's everything i wanted to show you in canary and now let's move on to the stable version the first change i'm going to show you here is the new price tracking feature and this is one of the products on amazon with the price showing right here when i go to the grid view with the tab highlighted under the ellipses now i have an option called the track prices the overlay card has two options, the first one to activate the feature and it only works with price drops, so if the price went higher you will not get notified. The second option is called price drop alerts and the tapping on the arrow will take you to the notifications settings for Google Chrome, from here you can choose between default or silent notifications. I talked about this feature before in one of my previous episodes but for some reason it disappeared and now it's back again. And by the way this feature requires a flag to be activated so let me show you how to do this. Step 1 is to fully type this link in your address bar without using the autocomplete feature, it's a chrome colon two forward slashes flags. Once loaded, search for price tracking and then tap on the options and choose enable the price notifications, then force quit your Google Chrome and open it again and you will be good to go. The second new feature is under bookmarks. Now you will see a new item called reading list. This page will include all the links you added to your reading list on the PC and I couldn't find a way on Android to do the same thing. Anyways, here you have two sections. One is called unread which is available offline and the second one is called read. Once you tap on any of the links, it will be immediately moved under the red section. From here, you can tap the ellipses button and delete any of them. And also when you tap on the ellipses button under the unread section, you will be able to mark as red, select or delete as well. You can multi-select the links and delete all of them together if you want, or open multiple links in separate tabs. So once you tap on open a new tab, it will open each link in a separate video like this. So I have one two, three, four. And finally Chrome on desktop got a small visual tweak. Now all the menus have more rounded corners to match the design language of Windows 11. Next, Google Photos. And the only change I'm gonna show you here is the new people and pets widget. So let me try to add it to my home screen. It will first ask you which Google account you want to link it with and then it will show you the full list of people and pets you have in your gallery. From here you can choose one or multiple if you want and then tap on confirm then it choose one of the six shapes available and after a few seconds it will show up on your home screen. Next, the Google TV app. And now you'll see a button at the bottom right corner called TV Remote which will give you access to the new remote for Android TV. Not only this but we also got a new TV remote tile in the quick settings area. The remote itself got a couple of new features. The first one is the new TV selector at the top. As you see here it shows my device name. 
and when I tap on it, it will search for other devices available in my network so I can select a different TV if I want. You can also disconnect your remote from the current device by using the small X right here. And finally, when you tap on the ellipsis button at the top right corner, you will see two different types of controls. The first one is called the swipe control, which is I'm currently using. Or if you want a more precise option, you can choose the pad control. And in this case, you will get five different buttons to navigate your device. Next, Google phone app. And the first change is in the search bar at the top. Now it has more rounded edges instead of using the rectangular shape like before. And by this, it matches all other apps that support Material U. The second change is the call controls in the notifications shade now support Material U. As you see, everything matches the device theme. And when you tap on any of the buttons, you will see two different colors if it's on or off. Next, Google Messages. And now when you go to Settings and then Suggestions, you will see a new menu item here called Nudges. And when you go inside, it has two different toggles. The first option is called Suggest Reply Reminders. And this one will automatically check the messages you might have forgotten to reply to and move them towards the top of your list. The second one is called Suggest Follow Up Reminders. The description says sent messages that may need you to follow up will move to the top. I'm not sure how it will do this, so if you have any idea, please let me know in the comments. Anyways, I have both features activated for a few weeks now and I didn't see any difference. So I will keep you posted about this one. Next, Google Play Store. And the first change is under settings. Now when you expand the about section, you will see a new button here under the Google Play Store version called update Play Store. This one will simply check for updates and if you have one, it will update the app. Previously to do the same, you had to tap on the Play Store version, but now we have a button to make it more obvious. The second change is in the search functionality. Now when you search for anything, you will see a new page and also a new filter at the top left corner, which will allow you to modify the results based on the device type. So in this case, I have this device and Android TV. And that's happening because the app itself is available on both operating systems and also I'm signed in with the same Google account on both devices. So if I'm not signed in with my Google account on this Android TV, it will not show up in the filters. In other cases, you might also see a third filter for watches if the app has a compatible version. Change number three. If your phone is connected to cellular network, when you try to download a large app or game, you will get a slightly redesigned card at the bottom of the screen asking you if you want to continue using this network or wait for the next available Wi-Fi connection. Next, the Google app. And now you will see a new floating refresh button in the Discover feed and also inside the Google app itself. You will also notice a bigger cover photo for articles in the Discover feed. Change number three. If you have multiple articles from the same website in your feed, they will be grouped together in one section with the heading at the top left corner showing the website name. Next, Google Assistant. And now the family bell feature is available on Android devices, which means if you have a bell activated, you will get the notifications on your Android device, not only your smart speakers and displays. To access the new feature, head over to your Google Assistant settings and then go to family bell, expand the settings for any bell you have and tap on plays on menu. Once you do this, you will see a new option here called my Android phones. Once you tick the box and tap on save, this bill notifications will be showing on your Android device. So let me show you a quick sample. Let's clean. As you heard, you will get the same exact voice message as your smart speakers and displays, plus a full screen animation. You can also dismiss the notification using the X button at the bottom of the screen. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to show you in Google Apps. Please let me know in the comments what do you think. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.